Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to do a video, and I'm going to try to keep this under 10 minutes, on how to do object arrays. And uh, basically these are just going to be for loops wrapped in a module. So let me start right away with a linear array. So we're going to do a, we're going to create, so we're going to be creating this, these sphere, this sphere array. So we're going to be creating a module and it's going to be called linear array and it's going to receive two parameters and it's count and distance. Within the array we're going to have a for loop and it's going to loop uh, it's going to loop with the variable i and it's the the loop is going to be from from 0 sorry uh, to 1 and it's going uh, going to be count minus one and that will allow us to uh, start the array from the from the same origin point as the first object so it will be the array will be inclusive of the first object instead of ex ex exclusive in, of the position of the first object so all we need to do for the linear array is add a translate and that translate will in, in this case for now I'm only going to be doing it for the X for the X axis and then uh, you can modify that easily enough with a translate later on I might add a way to uh, just pass in a vector that for the for the translate or even a vector for the whole thing so now how do we apply it to whatever object we're just going to use the children uh, function here or operator so this means that whatever this is called on, uh, it will it will transform. So how does that work? So this is this is where I come in and say and, and we say operator. Um, normally you can call a module and you put what you put whatever you want to operate on in the in the module call within parentheses. So in this case, it works just like a translate or a rotate does. So if we do a sphere, uh, we'll do a sphere of uh, five. And now when I um, when I re re render this, it's going to get rid of rid of all this stuff or recompile it. So now I have my one sphere. So I want to if I want to make an array of that sphere, I just put in linear array, and with the two arguments, I'm going to do we'll just do five of them at at a spacing of ten units, and there we have our our five. So that's to me a single line linear array five ten is way easier than doing all that. So basically it says apply this transform, which I guess it is now, or this, um, what did I call it before? Or apply this to the sphere. Uh, so that, that works just like every other command you, you do now. Um, so the next one we're gonna do is a rectangular array. And the rectangular array uh, is, you know, just like it's almost identical to the linear array, except that it's it's rows and it's going to have rows and columns and distance. And this also brings up something I I don't quite understand. I I don't how understand how um, overloading works or method overloading works in uh, module overloading works in OpenSCAD. Um, I know that like a sphere, you can call it with a couple of different argument arrangements. Uh, but I don't know how to implement that, so I'm going to have to learn how to do that, and, and you'll see why in a second. So for this, in this case, instead of count, we're going to do rows here. So I'm just going to copy this from above, and we're going to add a second loop. And this one is will be we'll change it to J here, and change it to columns. And for the translate, it it's going and let's. Um, to add their four bracket before I forget. So for the translate, we're going to translate distance times i and then also um, distance times j. So that'll translate it in both directions uh, as as we loop through the structure. So let's let's just try and make sure that okay, no syntax error. I hit F5 to see if there's any syntax error, errors. So now let's do rect. Let's just copy this. We'll do rectangular array. And I'm going to be. I'm going to show you where I'm. Where I have some confusion. 
so you can see. So if I do, let's say I do, I want to do a cube. I want to do it with uh, four rows, five columns at a distance of 10. And I hit F5. Oh, okay, there it worked. So sometimes it, I have to type in rows equal or columns equal to get it to work. And then other times I don't. So if I, if I come to understand that, I'll do a video on it. So that's our rectangular array. Now I want to do a polar array. So we're going to do, um, uh, so this, this has a lot of similarity to linear. So we're just going to copy linear. Oops. And we're just going to call this polar array. Oops. Okay. And instead of uh, count distance, we're going to have radius. We're going to have radius count. Um, I don't like count, but we'll, we'll stick with that for now and we'll do axis. Now our for loop is going to be a little bit different this time because we're going to be looping around a circle. So by default, I want the circle to be considered 360 degrees and um, the count. So we're going to, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So we want the circle to be 360 degrees and the step is going to be 360 divided by the number of objects we want. So if it's you know uh, four objects, that'll come out to 90. So you have one at each at each corner. So the trans so the translation and the children we're going to have to add a rotate because that'll actually uh, create the rotation we want. And I'm just going to do zero. And I'm going to do ro I'm going to rotate around uh, Y for this. And again, you will be able to achieve, um, you know, different types of orientations of array through rotate and translate outside of these. So the translate instead of distance is just going to be radius this time. So what what that does is it offsets whatever child object we have. Um, to the radius of the polar array that we want to rotate around. Um, it would be kind of cool if you could figure out where in space the child is, but I don't think you can do that. So if you, you know, if you wanted to rotate this object, um, it would default to rotating around zero, zero, zero. Um, but I, do, I don't think you can query in OpenSCAD like that, at least not any way I know of. So now when we do the polar array, and we're going to do this with a sphere or a, um, a cylinder, I'm sorry. And let's do a radius of, I don't know, 40. We'll make a giant. And let's do a count of uh, 8. I'm just making stuff up now. And oh, I guess I didn't, I didn't implement axis yet. Let's get rid of that. All right, I think you can just leave it in there. It just won't be used. Okay, and we're gonna do a cylinder. Let's make it 10. And I'm not going to center it. I am gonna function it, cause, uh, face number it, because I just hate ugly cylinders. Okay, so let's see, what did I do wrong? Um, oop, forgot my end bracket there. Okay, what else did I do wrong? Let me hunt for that so I don't waste your time. Okay, so that was a really stupid mistake. I just had an extra R in there. Um, that's where the basic editor in OpenSCAD kind of makes it difficult. Simple mistakes like that, which if it was highlighted or or maybe I, maybe I should have seen that in my, uh, let's see, would you see that in the console? No, see, it doesn't even generate an error. It just, it tries to call something that's not there. Um, It'd be nice if it had a little bit more functionality than that. So now we have our polar array. And one thing you'll notice right away is these don't look, um, you know, these are not tangential to the rotational circumference. Okay. And, you know, I think by default, that's what you kind of would want. Let me make it more obvious. Let's make this uh, 20. So you see how they're not, they're not, uh, 
basically what's happening is they're being rotated. Let's make this uh, 20. That's not what I wanted. Um, radius equals 20. Height equals 10. That could be woo, too much. Okay, so basically what they're being rotated around is the center of this. Um, what I want it to be rotated around so it's tangential there, that's even better. So they're being rotated around this center point here. So if we change this to a center true, you'll see right away that um, you'll get the kind of the more, expect, more expected result. I mean, you may need it that way, but now you'll see that this line is, is tangential to the circumference. So um, my guess is that you're gonna need to use this more than you would the other. But you could, you know, you can choose what you want. Okay, so um, that's our polar array. And what else? Well, I'm gonna end it at that, and I hope you like this video. If you have any questions about any of these things, I'd be glad to help answer. Um, and if you'd like to uh, a change in the module or or um, some additions, I'd be happy to try to tackle that for you. So I hope you enjoy my videos. Uh, please subscribe and like and click on the bell for updates and all that good stuff. And have a great day.